Hello there and welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, so before we get started, I know there's like a wall of text right there and I hate writing so much stuff that you have to read, but uh, it's up there for good reason, so don't freak out. But in this video, I just wanna talk about something that I think can be very confusing when you get to it is, you know, it's at a certain point, especially when you're talking about carboxylic acid derivatives, all of a sudden you have so many options to reduce carbonyls with, right? Whether your carbonyl is in an amide, an ester, an acid anhydride, an acid halide, right? What reduces what in terms of when you have a source of hydride, does it reduce an ester all the way to an alcohol? And I want to, you know, put it all out there and help you, hopefully help you understand you know, who is super reactive, who is not so reactive, and who's like least reactive in terms of, you know, your sources of hydride and how they attack the carbonyls and carboxylic acid derivatives. So if we take a look at the wonderful board right here, I want to explain the madness. So these two characters, NABH4 and lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, and also what I should say is all four of these, right, whether you use these two in your class or not, I've seen them pop up. I want to you know, at least expose you to them. They're all sources of hydride ion. We're talking hydrogen with two electrons and negative one formal charge. These two are very common. You've definitely encountered them in organic chemistry one. This is NABH4 and lithium aluminum hydride. So just to rehash about them, NABH4. Between these two, this is your more mild option of H minus. When I say mild, I mean, it's not going to go on a reduction war path if you use it. It's more conservative. It's not as crazy as a lithium aluminum hydride, right? So it doesn't and it can't reduce esters, amides, and carboxylic acids, but it can do pretty much everything else. We know from OCHEM1, it can do aldehydes and ketones. And with your more reactive carboxylic acid derivatives like acid halides and acid anhydrides, it can work with those as well. The one plus about NABH4 is that the workup isn't with a strong source of acid. It's with ethanol, it's with an alcohol. So it's a really, really, really great option for, uh, you know, if you have an alkene, if you have a double bond or a triple bond, I should say, you know, double bond, triple bond safe, uh, it's not going to, you know, do a Markovnikov -Kov addition and protonate that electrophilic double or triple bond. So a great option, you know, if you have some other, you know, double bond, triple bonds in your molecule and you wanna reduce a specific carbonyl. Now, this one, Lithium aluminum hydride, the, we know lithium aluminum hydride. A worldwide accepted abbreviation is LAH. It's not like something I made up, it's a global thing that everyone knows about. This can do it all, whether that's good or bad. It is super reactive. H minus, when it comes from lithium aluminum hydride, is considered a hard nucleophile. It's a crazy reactive source of hydride. It can reduce it all, and because the workup, you know, the workup requires H plus, I want, or, you know, H3O plus some type of acid that I wanted to highlight that because I think that's sometimes um, maybe not emphasized enough. So if you have no double bonds, you need to just reduce everything that you have. This is a great option in terms of carbonyls. Now, the two over here that maybe are new to you or maybe unknown to you, this one, Dibol, uh, diisobutyl aluminum hydride. I know it's a mouthful. And if you think that's a mouthful, wait till we say the name for that. I have, actually have it written down. Uh, so these are also some globally accepted other abbreviations for Dibol. So it can be, you know, like Diba, Diba, you know, da, Diba with a dash H or Dibol even ex in, you know, explicitly writing the H, you know, so it's a source of hydride. Now, this is a less, this is a toned down version of lithium aluminum hydride. And to be honest with you, it's kind of used in specific scenarios to not, re to, to reduce things less than lithium aluminum hydride would, and in situations that NABH4 could not. For example, it's super, super, super popular to use it to reduce esters to aldehydes, to just do one kind of course of attack. And same thing with nitriles to aldehydes, one, you know, one attack versus attacking twice, like the hydride from lithium aluminum hydride would, since it's a hard and crazy reactive nucleophile. And last but not least over here, uh, and literally have this written down. This is lithium tritert butoxy aluminum hydride. Crazy long name, but obviously you see the lithium, you see the three, the tri, uh, T butoxy groups, and aluminum hydride. 
Now, this is even more toned down than dye ball, and the reason being is because with all these tert butoxy groups, it's very big and bulky, so it kind of you know decreases its ability to be a crazy reactive nucleophile. So it's it's just a more mild version of dye ball, which is a more mild version of lithium aluminum hydride. So it's less reactive, and what it's really, really, really good for is just like this can attack, you know, the more, you know, like ester, for example, that's a less reactive carboxylic acid derivative. We use dye ball to attack it once. This is really great to attack the more reactive carboxylic acid derivatives, like an acid anhydride, like an acid halide, you know, chloride or bromide, just the one time to get it to go to an aldehyde. Now, that's all great. I just spat a bunch of words at you, and we know, you know, I know that you came here for answers and examples and to actually see this stuff in action. So what I want to do is to close this video out. I'm going to erase all this word mumbo jumbo garbage and I want to hit you with some examples so you can actually see these in real time and the differences in the situations where you know, lithium aluminum hydride might reduce a little bit more than say dye ball and uh, lithium Try tert butoxy aluminum hydride. I, I literally have to Google that to remember how to say it. So let me erase this. We'll do some examples and we will close out this video. Okay, gang, to put all that, you know, that big wall of text into concrete examples to hopefully help all that make a little bit more sense, I just have quick, or I have four quick problems right here where I want to just, you know, show you what tool is, you know, is best for the situation at hand. Clearly we have this giant toolbox of not just all, uh, you know, reactions that we've learned just from OCHEM 1 and now into OCHEM 2, but we just have, we, we have four things that can, you know, to the naked eye, it looks like they all do the same thing, but there are definitely different situations that are more appropriate uh, where different, you know, sources of hydride can be more effective. So if we take a look at the top, I hope what, what we can see is that we have a carboxylic acid and then over here we have an aldehyde, and in each of these, you know, this one and all four, we're filling in the reagent. Now, you know, we have a few options that we could, you know, different paths we could take to get from here to here. We could absolutely just reduce this into oblivion with lithium aluminum hydride going all the way down to the alcohol. You know, we'd have an O minus, we'd protonate it up, and then we could use PCC or some other, you know, if you're using a green oxidation agent to get to the aldehyde but we also have a new option now what we can do is if we could turn this into an acid halide either a bromide or a chloride right which with a carboxylic acid if we did a first step of socl2 and if you wanted to use bromine you could use pbr3 that first step what that will do is give you an acid chloride okay now with our newfound knowledge what we can do is we can use Oh goodness, let me see if I can remember how to write the lithium aluminum H and then TBO. So this would be the lithium tri -tert butoxy aluminum hydride. We know this is a more and more mild version of lithium aluminum hydride, more mild than also dye ball. So this will only, you know, if you're gonna think of this as a source of H minus, this only attacks here one time, this swings back down, you do an additional elimination mechanism, you boot off the CL, and with a last step, you do need a step of H2O just for workup, you get the aldehyde. So, you know, a new approach now to get to an aldehyde if you're going through a reduction pathway. You don't just have to use a lithium aluminum hydride to get all the way down to an alcohol and then build yourself back up to the aldehyde. You just take your carboxylic acid, make it into a different carboxylic acid, derivative, here it was an acid halide, more specifically a chloride, reduce it, and then work up. So now here, you can see we're going from an ester to an aldehyde. So remember, we can obviously blow this away with lithium aluminum hydride and use PCC, but let's use one of our new reduction, or you know, sources of hydride. So what we can do is, this is not going to work for NABH4, obviously that's an old friend of ours, but not for this. This is a good situation for dye ball, dye isobutyl lithium, uh, sorry, dye isobutyl aluminum hydride, my mistake. So what we can do is we just throw it in straight away. You can literally just write dye ball, that is 100% acceptable, 
and then H2O. So again, this will go through a similar addition elimination mechanistic pathway. I'm, I'm totally abbreviating this, by the way. There's, you know, if you're gonna do this mechanism properly, you definitely have to draw out the full structure of this and there's the arrows, they're the same, there's just, you know, more things going on, but it boils down to being a source of H minus. You attack, electrons swing up, they swing back down, you kick off your leaving group, water will help quench what it needs to quench, negative charge wise. Now, down here, so you can see we have a problem here where we have an acid and hydride. It is asymmetric. And I I'm totally just designing this problem. You know what I can even do to make it better? Let me just do this. So I just want this problem to focus on what happens to this piece of the acid and hydride. I think you can see this here, right there. So we don't care about this section at all. It's just gonna be a glorified leaving group to us. Now, what do we do? We obviously have a double bond and we have this acid and hydride but we need them, you know, we can't use one of our new friends because we need to reduce this all the way down to the alcohol. So what I'm thinking is we either have to choose NABH4 or LAH, lithium aluminum hydride. But you see, we have the double bond. We have some, we have a, you know, we're alkene sensitive, we're acid sensitive, right? So what we need to do is actually just use NABH4 and let me, let's toss in excess because we're gonna need to attack twice. So you need at least two equivalents and then you can quench with ethanol. You might not even write, need to write one and two. You can just write NABH4 excess and you can even just toss in excess ethanol as well. The point of this problem is that NABH4 is the right choice here because you want to you know, retain your double bond. You want to reduce all the way down to the alcohol and NABH4 is going to help you get there. And then last but not least, you can see we're going to reduce an amide now. And I do want to circle back up to here. There are some, you know, I've seen all over the internet, different classes. Some, some classes, some courses, professors would want you to put this at low, low, low temperature. Sometimes they may even teach you, you can reduce all the way down to the alcohol, but very, very, very commonly, Dybol is used to do this ester to aldehyde. Uh, but in my experience, the only thing that's gonna help you in this amide situation that you need to reduce is your good friend, the strongest source of hydride we got, Lithium aluminum hydride will get the job done. It basically just acts like a whiteboard eraser and just wipes away the carbonyl in the amide. Okay, gang, if you had any confusion regarding these sources of hydride, whether it be from NABH4, Dybol, lithium aluminum hydride, or this, because I can't say that again, I'll have my tongue in a twist. Uh, I hope it makes a little bit more sense now. Yes, they all accomplish the same goal of attacking the carbonyl carbon with hydrogen, making fewer bonds from the carbonyl carbon to oxygen, but there's different levels of reactivity. Some are more reactive than others, some are more mild than others. And, you know, based on uh, some are even, you know, better tools for different situations. So thank you for watching. If you're watching from YouTube, thanks for finding me or thanks for watching me here, but make sure to pop over to jokehem.io where I have you know, paired for worksheets and solutions to those worksheets, 100% free. It's just a way for you to go from the video after you've learned some knowledge and practice it right away. There are some easy problems to help get your footing and then there are some harder ones to really crank it up to make sure you understand what you just watched. But no matter what, I hope to see you all in the next video.